if we are, let's assume for a moment that you were expecting price to go down to that 4103 level, okay? And you saw this setup up here. You saw price trade up into this fair value gap. Let me move it away so you can see it. This candle's low. This candle's high. And this candle passes through between the previous candle's low and the next candle's high. There's no overlap of this candle up inside that range until we get to here. So that little shape area that I put on my charts that my students do now too, that little area is where if you were looking at a paint roller and the paint roller applies paint to the wall rolls down this little area is like a pocket of where the paint wasn't really thick it wasn't evenly distributed to the wall and the wall would be like this chart canvas okay if there was no charts on this at all it would be a blank canvas like a wall before the painter puts the roller and delivers the paint on the wall well, as it drops down like this from here to here, this is where, like when you take that roller, if you ever painted anything or watch a painter you know, use a roller, when they first apply that roller to the wall, the paint is really thick. It's, it's ample. It's delivered abundantly to the wall. And as that roller continuously rolls in the direction it starts rolling in when you first apply it to the wall, Eventually, there'll, there'll be small little porous little pockets where paint did not distribute to the wall. So the surface of the wall will have what? Little spots. And that is much like what we're seeing here, where the paint comes in, it applies to the wall, keep going down, keep going down. But now if you look back, there's a small little area here where in an ideal world, the painter would take that roller, apply more paint to it, and then do what? Roll back up over top this little area and this little area. And then he can move on to another area of the wall where he hasn't painted yet. Does that make sense? To me, that makes sense as, a, as an analogy, because if that would have been taught to me when I first learned how to read price action, it would have made a whole lot more sense versus overbought, oversold, you know, what swing high is the real one with divergence and what trend line do I use? What's my moving average settings? You know, what RSI settings should I have my set on? You know, what, do I use MACD, a histogram, or do I use the moving crossovers? <laughs> All the stuff that was a waste of my time, these are the things that would have been more beneficial to me, which is the nuts and bolts of price action. So looking at where the, the market can go back in and do what? Replenish paint to the canvas put put more paint back in an area where it needs it so when you look at price action and you identify these little areas like this you think it's going down here see the painter needs the paint down to this level here to, to finish the job the price run the algorithm will want to go down there but it has to do what it has to deliver the market efficiently otherwise it's a straight line like cpi when that when that market data comes out what happens market's just doing nothing until CPI number. All of a sudden, you have a, a vertical line. That's it. That's it. It's, it's, all you have is a vertical line that keeps expanding. You can't trade that. You can't do anything with it except for regret that you were in the trade. It's not going to respect your stop loss. It's going to laugh at you. It's going to literally make you feel like you're a fool and you should have never done that. And you should feel that way because the CPI is an absolute freight train like you're literally trying to play chicken with a freight train it's coming right at you hit me it will stand on those tracks it will do that and drag you for miles okay until your account's gone or you lose your sanity so you have to know where price is going to go 